Hello and welcome to the State of the Fleet Industry, a weekly video series produced by Automotive Fleet Magazine. My name is Mike Antich, I'm editor of Automotive Fleet, and today I'd like to examine what's going to be occurring in the fleet industry for the week of November 23rd. And as we're only a month away from the start of the 2021 calendar year, I thought I'd focus today's discussion on providing a forecast of fleet trends for commercial fleets that will be occurring between now and into the first quarter of 2021. However, you know, there are a lot of unknowns that are going to be taking place between now and then uh, that could radically, radically for, um, alter any of these forecasts. And in particular, we've got a runoff election that's going to be taking place in Georgia in um, uh, mid to late January for the U.S. Senate. And depending on how that election goes, we could be in store for a divided government, and we've been in situations like that, so we know how that plays out. Or we could be looking at one-party control of both the legislative and executive branches, which could usher in some pretty dramatic changes in terms of tax code, alternative fuel priorities, incentives, and a major um, uh, infrastructure bill that's been much talked about by uh, both political parties. Uh, and also there's a likelihood that, um, and, and a lot of pressure to try to get a stimulus bill out before Christmas. Uh, we're unable to do that uh, prior to um, uh, the election, so now the pressure is to try to do it in a lame duck session. And that should be good for the used vehicle marketplace because we know from past experience uh, and past incentive uh, payments, those monies a lot of times were used as a down payment to buy a used vehicle. So that should bode well in terms of fleet resale values. In terms of an infrastructure bill, I, uh, there's a lot of confidence that something like that would be happening. Um, we have a experience with that going back to the 2008-2009 time frame when there was a similar type of infrastructure bill that was introduced. But from our experience at that time, uh, one of the requirements was that projects, in order to be funded, had to be shovel ready. So they wanted to pump um, the money into the economy that would be used immediately. And what ended up happening, based on our experience for that 2008-2009 time frame, is there was widespread exaggeration among entities asking for this money as to whether or not projects were shovel ready. Um, and this exaggeration uh, led to uh, a lot of money being issued for projects that really did not see fruition immediately but saw it later in the year. If history is any example and, or a precedent, um, most likely we're going to be seeing a lot of that again uh, if an infrastructure project comes through this time, uh, meaning that a lot of these monies that are going to be earmarked for that we're not going to be seeing until much later in the 2021 model year or calendar year and even into the 2022 uh, calendar year. So um, it will be good for fleet. Uh, you know, there's gonna be a lot of uh, uh, fleet vehicles that are gonna be acquired in order to uh, fulfill those projects, but most likely it's gonna be occurring later rather than sooner. So with my forecast for today, I like to focus on what's gonna be happening in the next four months. Um, and a lot of these um, forecasts that I'll be me making most likely will be unaffected by the politics of the day. A lot of these things that I mentioned at the earliest will be happening in a second, third quarter of 2021, most likely later into the year and even into the 2022 calendar year. So let's start with my forecast. I want to start uh, by examining uh, key spend categories in fleet um, since we revolve around money. Everything that fleet does revolves around money. And let me examine the largest categories first and then down in descending order. So the largest expense is in the area of depreciation. So what can we expect from um, uh, resale values in the 2021 calendar year? So when you break this out by vehicle segment, uh, let's first examine class one, class two pickup trucks. And the anticipation there is that these resale values for these used vehicles are gonna con continue to remain strong for into the next four to six months. Prior to this, they have been strong. They've been strong from really from the summer on, um, and they've really been exceeding guidebook values in many ways. The anticipation is this momentum is going to carry into uh, the first quarter of 2021, especially as we get into uh, the resale market. Uh, 
and excuse me, as we get into the spring market. And the reason that's important is because that's when income tax uh, refunds are made. And a lot of times income tax refunds are used to um, um, fund used vehicle purchases. Also, uh, this is a time when the weather starts warming up and there's an uptick in the construction market, which has already been going strong. Uh, we anticipate that will be continuing, uh, especially as the weather warms up and there should be ongoing strong demand for utility vehicles and work trucks. The other thing is, I'm getting a little ahead of myself, but we anticipate that fuel prices are going to remain stable. Uh, the reason I bring that up now is that bodes well for used, uh, used trucks. Um, and it also bodes well for new truck um, uh, sales. But when um, fuel prices are stable or relatively low, that helps to stimulate uh, the sale of used uh, full-size trucks and SUVs. Um, and the resale segment that continues to be the strongest, and we anticipate that it will remain the strongest as we go past of the first of the year into the first quarter, that's the vocational truck market. In particular, any type of vocational vehicles, service vans, utility trucks, and work vans. We anticipate work van resale prices to continue to remain strong, primarily because of the limited inventory that we're anticipating of these vans in the wholesale marketplace. It's really a supply demand situation. As we see um, uh, economic activity increasing, there's gonna be a greater demand for these vehicles, but we don't anticipate that there's gonna be an increase in inventory to accommodate this. So as we go into the next uh, vehicle segment, we're looking at sedans. And um, as we've touched upon in prior reports, uh, sedans as a percentage of fleet vehicles is declining. Uh, primarily as fleets and retail customers start switching over to crossovers and smaller SUVs. But sedans continue to bring in strong returns in the wholesale marketplace. Um, you know, and one of the key reasons for that is that as the inventory of sedans in the wholesale market reaches an equilibrium, so it's decreasing, but eventually it's going to reach an equilibrium with what the ongoing buyer demand is, those resale values are going to continue to remain strong. And the key area for concern in terms of depreciation does revolve around crossovers. As they say, what sells good new sells good use. So uh, crossovers are selling very well in the new vehicle market, uh, the anticipation that should carry over. But the problem there is um, as more new crossovers are sold, ultimately those are going to become the used vehicles of tomorrow. And um, that the anticipation is that there's going to be an increase in supply of crossovers in the wholesale market, which may lead to a softening of re uh, resale prices for that vehicle segment. But small SUVs, crossovers continue to sell well. Um, and despite that increase of inventory, softening of values, those prices should continue to remain strong. So let's go into the next uh, largest area, which are fuel prices. Um, and this is your largest operating expense and it's your largest, uh, second largest overall expense after depreciation. Um, and uh, what we've experienced with the pandemic, the decrease in miles, uh, it was really the key factor that led um, uh, fuel prices to remain flat for the 2020 year. But you know, fuel prices usually mirror the economy. When the economy is down, prices uh, for fuel, fuel prices tend to soften. But when the economy picks up, fuel prices trend to go upward. But now as we're entering this winter period, this increase in infections, uh, a lot of um, uh, lockdowns are reappearing now. You know, the question is, is that gonna be resulting in fewer miles driven, most likely? Um, and will that be putting uh, downward pressure on fuel prices? And again, most likely. Um, so the anticipation is we should continue to see stable fuel prices for the balance of this year into the first quarter um, of um, 2021. Um, so, so the full fuel prices in the first quarter of 2021 are, are gonna remain stable, but they're still gonna be below. That's an important uh, distinction here. They're gonna still be re uh, lower than what we experienced in 2019 and 2018. And really, historically, if we use that as a barometer on fuel prices, 
Um, we really don't anticipate that there's going to be big increases in fuel prices until the April and May timeframe as we approach the Memorial Day holidays, which traditionally has led to a spike in fuel prices. But fuel is a volatile, or crude oil is a volatile economy, and it could take ver uh, very little to turn this all around. But uh, if we s extend out and extrapolate what current trends are, the anticipation is fuel prices should stay stable until we get into that April and May 2021 timeframe, which should put upward pressure on these fuel prices. So another area that I like to examine is, is maintenance trends. Uh, you know, again, uh, because of the pandemic, uh, the cost per mile for maintenance trends has remained uh, uh, flat, um, but that's primarily because of the fewer miles driven. But the price of transaction prices have been increasing. And one of the key reasons for the increase in transaction prices has been this ongoing transition to synthetic motor oils, and that's causing uh, PM transaction prices to trend upward. Also, companies have been holding on to vehicles longer. Uh, we have been seeing uh, an uptick in unscheduled maintenance expenses. It's very reminiscent of what occurred in that 2008-2009 uh, uh, credit crisis. Um, that to cause a lot of fleets to extend cycling. Uh, but there is one area that is increasing, uh, and that is brake wear. Uh, brake wear, industry-wide, when you aggregate that among all fleets, that has gone up, and that's primarily being attributed to the increase in the final mile delivery fleets. And as we start approaching the holiday seasons, uh, as we get into Thanksgiving, um, Christmas, and so on, um, we know from past experience our roads are going to be clogged up with all of these vans uh, uh, delivering uh, holiday gifts and materials. So do anticipate that there is going to be this ongoing increase in brake expenses and that will be extending uh, into the tw uh, first quarter 2021. This is also going to uh, extend into tire expenses and also retread expenses. We're also going to be seeing, especially as we see more infections occurring in this fourth quarter uh, from the, the contagion, from the virus, uh, that there's going to be an ongoing increase in mobile maintenance services. Um, I think there's going to still be a strong push on the part of employees wanting to social distance. Um, um, and I felt that recently when I took my son's car in just yesterday in order to have the oil change. You know, very strong pressure on uh, social distancing there. So in terms of fleets, uh, I think that's going to be um, stimulating this ongoing um, increase in demand for mobile maintenance services. Even though more expensive, you know, the offset is less downtime, uh, happier employees because they're not concerned uh, about um, being um, put in uh, risk of a contagion. And also, you know, vehicle quality just continues to increase. I mean, the vehicles built now have never been built better. Uh, it's really high quality, um, but we are seeing that uptick in unscheduled maintenance primarily because of the extended service life uh, that vehicles are being put through because of the pandemic. So let's look into tire expenses now. Uh, tire costs, um, that's typically your second largest operating expense, uh, third overall largest expense after depreciation and fuel. And tire expenses are primarily driven by commodity prices. And, and again, you know, that, that situation could turn depending on how commodity prices um, uh, are forecast or uh, play out into the future. But the rule of thumb is if commodity prices remain stable, which is the raw material used to manufacture tires, namely rubber, oil, and steel, then tire prices should stay stable. Um, volatility in commodity prices causes fluctuation in uh, retail tire prices. But so far we're not seeing that, um, and the anticipation is that um, prices should stay steady for the balance of this year and then there would be upward pressure on tire prices going into uh, that April timeframe. Historically, uh, when we've looked at tire companies in terms of their pricing uh, patterns, usually their pricing has gone up either in April or September. So 
Prices are anticipated to go up, but um, should be remain stable for this interim short-term forecast that I'm making. But again, it's all commodity driven, so depending on how commodity prices go, that's going to uh, go the way of uh, retail um, and national account prices. So the other area that I like to examine um, is, um, is safety issues. Um, you know, we're all in situations where all of our budgets are extremely tight. It's difficult to get additional budgeting to do more. So um, because of these budget restrictions, I think fleets are going to continue to have difficulty funding a lot of future safety programs. But we're also going to be seeing this ongoing uh, hesitation about doing behind the wheel driving training until um, these vaccines uh, really start proving their efficacy. Um, so um, budget constraints are going to continue to um, uh, put a lid or put downward pressure on future expenditure on safety programs. Although distracted driving is that number one issue, um, and I think that is going to be uh, uh, the one thing that's going to be opening up the purse strings a bit in order to um, assist fleet managers with safety programs. But in essence, um, and in summary, um, this disruption that's been caused by the pandemic has caused fleet prices uh, in order uh, to stay flat. Uh, the anticipation is that the economic recovery uh, is not going to be a straight line. It will be uh, a bit uneven. Uh, it may not be happening as fast as we would like, and that may constrain business activity, which in a converse way actually helps to keep fleet prices down. It will take time to recover um, from this pandemic. So with that, that concludes my state of the industry presentation for the week of November 23rd. I'd like to thank you for listening.